Oh, I am so sorry, everybody, for that um, interruption, but I have a contractor working at the house and he needed to respond to a question. So we're going to get started here. Thanks, everybody, again for coming. Um, just would a note that if you, we will stop during the presentation several times if you have questions to go ahead and ask those questions using the question function. If um, Anytime you have any technical questions about the GoToWebinar platform, use the chat function and we will pick those up and be able to um, respond most efficiently. So we hope that you'll find this um, webinar useful. If I can get my directions straight. Again, I'm Randy Welsh, I'm the Executive Director for the National Wilderness Stewardship Alliance. And as such, we uh, bring these programs to you, the Wilderness Stewardship Community, to um, help you in your role as um, volunteer stewards of the national forests and other public lands to carry out um, the good work that you're doing. Today's presentation is really about the National Wilderness Stewardship Alliance funding programs as well as a recap of Hike the Hill, which is where we're going to start today. Um, for those that aren't aware, Hike the Hill just wrapped up. Uh, started last weekend and went through this last week back in Washington, D.C. It's an annual gathering of the National Scenic and Historic Trails Associations, who are hosted by the Partnership for the National Trail System and American Hiking. Um, it is really all about engaging um, the partnership among those long distance trails, a series of agency briefings, strategy sessions, and then um, hill visits to try to work with the congressional members on both the House and the Senate side to address issues of concern to the, the trail community, to the National Scenic and Historic Trails community specifically, but in, in essence, they carry the water for the whole trail community um, in their visits up on the hill. They also meet with the appropriators, uh, they meet with, with staffers um, and committee staff that are working on the authorization language for different um, bills that are before Congress. This year, the main focus was on the extension of the Land and Water Conservation Fund and addressing um, CMTL funding within the Forest Service. And I'm real pleased to announce, and you probably heard it on the um, news, but the Senate voted on Thursday, I believe, to, um, or yeah, I think it was Thursday, maybe Wednesday night, voted to do a permanent extension of the Land and Water Conservation Fund as part of a big lands package that's working its way through Congress. It now is going over to the House where they is strong prospects that it will be passed and then on to the president who we expect would would fund would sign it and um so that's a real great and exciting news it, it brings some permanence to the land and water conservation fund now the the task will be to work on the funding for the land and water conservation fund so they can continue to do the good things that it has been doing for our american people public lands um, and the states for providing funds to support trails and other recreational conservation actions across the country. This issue about addressing CMTL funding within the Forest Service, I'm gonna talk specifically about it a little later in the program. Just know that the Forest Service is looking at changes in how they do their allocation um, and the accounting process that they use for keeping track of certain funds. And, that has some potential for providing flexibility to the local units, but taking away some of the transparency and um, accountability towards funding uh, trails work. Um, as the, the bucket gets bigger, then it's harder to track what's being spent in particular areas and longstanding agreements that are in place for certain levels of funding um, can get harder and harder to track when you go to a big bucket. And the concern here is that the trails funding will get lost in the broader 
for service budget, which would allow, which would, which would keep it harder to track what's being funded and then make the funds that are going to first the long distance trails and then consequently to some of the other trail programs in the country might make that harder to track. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that. And that was the, one of the main gists in the meeting with the Chief of the Forest Service, uh, Chief Vicki Christensen, as well as with um, Chris French, who is the Acting Associate Deputy for the Forest Service. He, um, Chris had made a decision to send most of the off the top funding to the regions without uh, considering the full implications. And um, it has an effect on some of the funding levels, specifically the long distance trail folks were concerned about the, um, the agreements that are in place and how those agreements will be funded because those are coming from that off the top um, trails funding in CMTL. And um, they have to now work with each of the regions to ensure that that money and, and funding is available and not lost somehow in the pressure to um, get other work done within the Forest Service. Um, as I said, there's lots of great meetings with appropriators and committee staff. Those discussions tended to cycle around both LWCF, some individual trail issues that were um, being addressed, and just letting the folks on Capitol Hill know of the value of dedicated trail funding, the, the consequences of uh, providing that funding in terms of putting people on the ground, getting volunteers out into the national forest, the public lands, and, and the good work that they're doing. So it's a great opportunity to share good messages. Um, NWSA was able to share about the, um, the good work that's been done in the last several years with the National Forest System Trail Stewardship Act funding, partnership funding, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that. So anyways, it was a hopeful set of meetings. Um, LWCF seems like it's on a trajectory for a permanent fix. Um, also, the, the nation, the, nationally, the Congress addressed the, um, the fire fix, the, um, the money that was going to fire emergencies. Um, periodically, when there were big emergencies for fire, they would sometimes have to take money from other appropriations within the Forest Service and the other land management agencies to pay for that fire. That often took money away from other parts of the Forest Service budget, including recreation and trails. And now with that fire fix in place starting in 2020, the hope is that it will decrease the, um, you know, it'll decrease the impact on these other programs and we'll no longer lose um, some of our you know, scarce appropriations for recreation and trails to fire, but we'll be able to allocate them fully. In the past, sometimes portions of those funds would be kept in reserves to provide for fire emergency funds, and at worst, they would be brought back and taken away uh, at the most critical time during the summer, and we hope that that will no longer happen. Another positive benefit that we learned about is that the appropriators have included an increase in CMTL for the Forest Service. It's very likely to go from 80 million to 85 million, and that's a very positive move. Um, we'll stay tuned to see what the House does, but it should should still stay in a um, in that higher level. And then we were able to talk to the congressionals too about finding funding for more trail stewardship to meet the intent of the National Forest System Trail Stewardship Act, getting more volunteers out onto the national forest, as well as um, increasing and improving upon the, um, the um, funding for trails overall. And I, I see a question about CMTL. Um, CMTL is the accounting appropriations term for the the maintenance of trails within the Forest Service. So it's it's basically the accounting line item that has all the trail funding for the Forest Service. All right. Um,
trying to advance the slide here. Just one second. It seems to be taking just a moment. Okay, I'm going to just pause here and see if there were any any other questions about the hike the hill. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but um, if there are any questions about hike the hill, go, go ahead and please enter those into the question uh, arena, and I'll respond to them. All right, well, we're going to go, seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and, thanks, Joe. Seeing them, I'm going to go ahead and um, move into the NWSA funding program, because I know that's probably what most of you are, are interested in and um, would like to, to learn about. Um, because I know we have a mixed crowd, I'm going to actually start with the National Forest Trail um, System Stewardship Partnership funding first, and then move into the Wilderness Stewardship Performance funding and then end on um, some two programs that we've had in the past that we hope we can resurrect uh, for the future, Boots on the Ground grants, um, and then the one that we did along did for the 50th anniversary. I probably won't touch on it because it's um, in the past, but um, we have had programs that, that covered special events and hope to be able to do so in the future. Um, and then I'm going to finish up the, the presentation talking about um, some ways you can help and then some upcoming events that you might be interested in, and then we'll close out with any final questions. So let's um, move into the National Forest Trail System Stewardship Partnership Funding. Um, so several years ago, the, the Forest Service Congress, the Congress passed the National Forest System Trail Stewardship Act that was trying to look at and address some of the issues that the Forest Service was having in uh, managing their trail system and specifically about maintaining the large number of trails that they, they, they own or that they operate on 158 million 158,000 miles of trail sorry about that 158,000 um, miles of trail that is managed by the national forest so it's a big job that they have and the only way it gets done is by the good work of you the stewardship community to um, work with them on doing maintenance and operations on the trail system one of the tenets of that stewardship act was trying to increase volunteers on the national forest doubling it over the course of five years and um, we were in a position in nwsa to work with the forest service and suggest putting together a trail stewardship partnership funding program to help encourage that volunteerism and encourage more people to be out on the the National Forest doing trail work and helping to whittle away at the trail backlog. Um, so the, we developed this program and the Forest Service funded it. Um, this We've had two solid years under our belt and uh, we're hoping for more. The focus is on trail maintenance accomplished, trying to get trails maintained to standard and reducing the backlog reduction as well as increasing the number of volunteers that are engaged uh, in the National Forest and doing work on the, the National Forest Trail System. Uh, to qualify for this particular funding program, the work must be on a National Forest System trail. Um, it must be part of the National Forest Trail System. Uh, that means it has to have a, um, a trail number and be carried on the the trail book, so to speak, the infra trail system that the Forest Service uses to track each of the, the trails within its um, quote system. And so if it's on an official Forest Service trail system trail, then it will qualify uh, 
potentially for funding. Now the, the National Trail Stewardship Act covers trails all across the national forest system, inside, outside of wilderness, motorized, non-motorized. Um, and th so this partnership funding also includes all trails across the national forest system. And NWSA, working with our other partners um, in the trails community, the Partnership um, of American Trails, American Hiking Society, the Backcountry Horsemen of America, the International Mountain Biking, Bike, Bike, Biking Association, the Blue Ribbon Coalition, and the American Motorcyclist Association. We've um, worked with them to promote and market this particular funding mix to encourage um, applications from the broader trails community. And, and we've had quite some success. And then representatives from each of these groups work with me to do the review and the rating ranking and then the actual selection of projects. And from that, we've, we've had great success in getting a balanced program of funding across the, the national forest system. We've had projects in every part of the country during all kinds of different trails. And I think with a, a good way for the program to work together, for all trail people to work together for the good of the trails program. Uh, our first year in 2017, a trial year, uh, we were awarded $230,000 by the Forest Service. We had over 91 proposals that were submitted with requesting a hundred, you know, requesting a million dollars in work. So you can see there was a, a big demand for this. There was quite, com it's quite competitive. We were only able to fund 23 of those initial proposals. But from that, we were able to generate a four to one return with the cash match um, and an in-kind contribution that was significantly higher than the amount of money we had to award. In 2018, the Forest Service graciously expanded the program to over $400,000, and we had 114 proposals that were submitted. Over 100, you know, over 1.4 million dollars of work was requested. We were able to fund 42 of those proposals, um, and then with the cash, cash matches and the in-kind contributions that were provided we were able to produce over a seven to one return on their investment. And when we met with the chief and we shared the report with her, you should have seen their eyes light up. They were so excited to, about the, the returns. The, they see the value of the program and um, would like to see it continued. But we have an issue and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, what I wanted to cover before I do that is just the the funding is not guaranteed. We're totally at the um, discretion of the agency and that's dependent on funding. The funding comes through a challenge cost share that MWSA has with the Forest Service. Um, if you're interested in more information about the partnership funding and how to apply, um, a fact sheet, an application form, and a budget form are located on our website at wildernessalliance.org under funding programs. Just follow the links from this, the front page and it will, will take you there. Um, they have not been updated yet. They will be available for this, this year um, no later than Monday. Um, my hope is to get started on them this afternoon and possibly have them filter out over the weekend, but they will all be available first thing Monday morning um, to give you all the information you need to evaluate um, your potential application for the program, to actually put an application together, which includes the application form and a budget form, a couple other um, documents that are needed, and then you'll be able to apply as, a, as an organization. The package is pretty streamlined. The, the application itself is generally um, three to four pages, just information about your organization, information about what you want to accomplish with, the, with trails maintenance, um, and then 
narrative that talks about the budget and the accomplishments that you will uh, be able to complete in the in the year that we're working on. Um, again, our focus is on trail maintenance miles and backlog reduction accomplishments. The most successful um, applications are those which really focus on getting you know large number of volunteers working across a broad spectrum of trails to get as much trail maintenance miles done um, in the course of a season. Um, the projects that are focused on a small section of trail, one or two, one or two miles, or even less than a mile, but a, a critical point um, uh, that needs some, some backlog reduction or heavy maintenance, those don't fare as well in this particular funding because we're we're trying to maximize the trail maintenance that's that's maintained and the, the backlog that can be reduced across a broad swath of the National Forest Trail System. Um, so this really is our formal announcement that we will have a program this year. Um, it, so the application period essentially starts right now and it will end on April 15th, uh, a appropriate day for a deadline. And we will announce the awardees as typically right around the 1st of May. Um, for those that were selected. Um, again, you can check our NWSA website for the latest announcements, the um, in information about the, the program. Um, all right, I have one question here. All right, so Lisa, or Patrice is asking me if we will know the total allocation for the Forest Service on Monday. And the answer to that is no. Um, we do not know a total allocation for this funding at this point in time. And there's some reasons for that. And I'll, I'll go into them in a second here. Let me advance the slide. I think it will move us to the right place. Um, so good question, Patrice. Let me get the slides forward and then we'll talk about that. Okay, so yeah, all right, so this goes back to that CNTL question that we originally started with. The Forest Service made a decision to take off the top monies and send them out to the region. Unfortunately, that affected our trail funding, which was considered in the off the top uh, funding. Uh, the Forest Service Washington office had a half a million dollars allocated this year uh, for the partnership funding. That was that's five hundred thousand dollars was what the request was, and uh, unfortunately, the Forest Service sent all that money out to the region in their initial budget advice, and so it is somewhat at risk. And what we are going to be asking all of the stewardship groups to do in a communication that's uh, going to be going out here shortly is to ask your help, solicit your help to see if um, you would make contacts with the regional forester. Um, we have a briefing paper that will be on the website and that will go out with our um, our information um, request to the wilderness stewardship groups that describes um, the issue, which essentially is that the money that was intended for this program was sent to the regions. We're asking the regional foresters to allocate a portion of their CMPL funding to help populate this fund, to put fifty to hundred thousand dollars each um, back into this fund, so that we can distribute it out in partnership projects um, across the national forest system. Um, we hope that a lot of the regions will agree to do that. They uh, certainly see the value, and as a seven to one. A return on their investment uh, across the system. We're hopeful that many of the regional foresters will do will do just that. Um, there's a couple of other efforts underway to work internally with the Forest Service. Um, you heard about that five million dollars I mentioned that might be additional CMTL. Uh, it's possible that the chief may save a, a portion of that to go into this funding. Um, they do like this program. They just are kind of stuck in how they can fund it at this point. 
So we um, do have some money on tap already uh, left over from last year that we're carrying forward. So we will have a program. What the final dollars will look like still remains to be determined, but we're hopeful that we'll be able to be operating in that same range, in that $400,000 to $500,000 range. Um, your efforts to help us and uh, continued efforts during March and April, early April, will um, turn the tide and see what results. Again, anybody that wants to help do this, um, your help participation in making those communication requests by March 15th would be most helpful. Um, uh, essentially, the, we will be sending out a briefing paper that, that talks about the, the moving of off the top funds to the regions. Um, there's somewhat the risk that's there that money could get focused on timber harvest and fuels reduction instead of on trails that we think that it's important for um, the trails community to, to be funded through this partnership effort uh, so that they can help assist in meeting the, the goals of the National Forest System Trail Stewardship Act, um, and that this funding is a way to be cost effective and efficient in getting volunteer trail maintenance work done on the National Forest. It's a small lift for each region to um, put forward some money to um, towards the agreement to fund this program. Um, we guarantee, because of the, some of the savings from last year, NWSA is not going to tap any of these funds for overhead. 100% um, of whatever the regions contribute will go into partnership project work around the, the country. And uh, of course, we do this because we encourage local units to utilize volunteers and trail maintenance on the national forest. That's really what this is all about. Um, so one last bit on the trail stewardship funding, and then I'll stop for questions on it. Of course, we, we screen all the applications that come in. Um, it requires work on the National Forest System Trail, of course. Um, the program does look for cash and in-kind matches in part of our rating system. Um, it's not a requirement that there is a cash match, um, but we require at least an in-kind match that would at least be a one-to-one. -one. So in, we look at the combination of both cash and in-kind, has to have a minim, minimally qualifying one-to-one -one match. I'd have to say that a lot, of the pro, a lot of the proposals that we get generally have some component of cash from outside sources and generally have more than a one-to-one. Um, match capability, especially when they're involving large numbers of volunteers, having a, a number of events, um, it it to quickly adds up, and it's easy to get an in-kind match that should exceed one to one um, with moving volunteers out onto the national forest. Uh, we do look at the organization's capability. We look at their past track record of, of completion within this grant program and in other things that they do. Um, we look at the project feasibility, what is what it is they say they're going to do, and what our trail experts think is, is feasible, given the, the dollars requested, the amount of time, energy, uh, people that they're putting towards it. We look at the level of accomplishment, the miles maintained, the backlog eliminated. Um, you know, again, I really can't stress enough that the more miles, the better, as long as they're realistic miles maintained the standard, uh, the better. And of course, the number of people involved, both volunteers and staff that are engaged. Um, I'd have to say that this program is really focused on trying to get those volunteer events and utilizing uh, people in and outside of your organization to do work on the national forest. This is not a, a good not a good funding source to just try to extend an existing workforce for a longer period of time, like to add another hitch or two to an existing 10-week hitch. Um, it, those, those programs are funded, but it depends on what else is available. It depends on what other projects are out there. And the, the priority is to try to look at the numbers of people that are involved in that trying to increase the number of volunteers that are engaged. 
not just covering staff costs. Um, that said, you know, funding a volunteer staff coordinator can often be a good way as uh, getting people out on the ground and the investment spent in a, a staff volunteer coordinator can pay big dividends in getting, you know, 100, 200 people out on the trail. So we look at all of those things in, 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 in um, making these decisions, and we try to get a final balancing in the um, program as to the area that is being serviced. In the past, all regions of the National Forest have received some portion of this funding, and uh, we balance the, the work, the proposals by the type of, of trail proposal, motorized versus non-motorized, wilderness versus non-wilderness. Um, we tend to, we, we try to make sure that we're not skewed um, in any one direction, but have a pretty good balance across the whole system. All right, so I'm gonna just stop here and see if there are any questions about the trail stewardship funding before I move on. Any quick questions? Okay, I am just trying to trying to get to where I can see them all. Okay, um, how many Forest Service regions are there? There's nine Forest Service regions. Um, yes, you. Somebody, uh, Patrice has asked about how to, um, how do I compete against those areas that have a large population base? Uh, because we do try to look at all the regions of the Forest Service, not all those regions have large population bases. It's really about how you leverage your um, your local community into um, doing volunteer trail work. And I can tell you, we've there are a large number of projects that are coming out of small towns and communities that have been able to generate uh, quite a few um, volunteers on the national forest. And I don't think that will really stop you from being able to be competitive. Um, it, it often doesn't take a lot of volunteers. Um, I think maybe the average on some of these projects, um, you know, no no projects are too small. No project. Well, we do cap the the projects at about twenty thousand dollars, but we have funded projects as low as uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Um, just to provide money for equipment and supplies to support volunteer stewardship. And um, getting 30 to 40 volunteers out on a, a several work days often can bring, bring big dividends. So no, no project really was too small. Um, okay, so there are, as part of that Trail Stewardship Act, a question has been asked about the priority areas. There is not a direct linkage between this funding and those priority areas. Um, the National Forest System Trail Stewardship Act uh, identifies as a, as a requirement for the Forest Service to identify about 15 to 16 priority areas around the country. And those priorities have now been determined. Um, we will look at the location of these project proposals against whether they're in a priority area or not. It won't be a sole factor. Um, it's not even a deciding factor. Um, it's more like ancillary information that we'll use in making the decisions. Uh, because those priority areas are expected to receive attention um, internally, um, we fully expect that they will get a, a fairly increase in funding internally and not need to rely on this external funding. Um, that said, I also um, should mention that many of you may have um, 
and that, that will apply with the wilderness stewardship funding. So I'm going to save that response. Um, what are the biggest backlog? What are the biggest backlog? Okay, that's part of that question. Um, um, yeah, we do look at the demographics of, of areas where we are supporting, um, trying to, if you're reaching out to underserved populations, youth, um, un underserved populations, then definitely we look at those things and they have an effect on, on what we're trying to fund. Uh, it's important to, to read, but it's all going to be a balancing act and uh, it's not skewed one way or the other. So um, projects all over the country have the possibilities of being potentially funded. And um, Sally Ferguson asked if I have any understanding about what regions might want to contribute right now. Um, I don't have a good sense of that. We haven't started making those contacts yet. Um, we think that there'll be a, a lot of interest. Uh, we think that there'll be uh, a number of regions that it's not, not going to be hard to convince them to support adding money to the stewardship funding. Um, we'll just have to start working on that and see what we can come up with. So that seems to be questions for stewardship funding. I'm going to go ahead and, and move into the next area of funding, which is our, our wilderness stewardship performance funding. So this, um, this pool of money, again, comes from the Forest Service. Uh, it's off the top. I'm pleased to say that this year, we do have $165,000 that's currently available. And depending on what happens with the final budget, we could see some increases in that amount before we make decisions in, in April and May. Um, but where did this Wilderness Stewardship Performance Funding come from? So the, this is... Um, a program that's designed to help the forest meet its requirements in accomplishing wilderness stewardship performance elements, which are the key work activities that the Forest Service focuses on in their wilderness stewardship management. Um, these are things like recreation site inventories, invasive species eradication, um, doing solitude monitoring, and there are there's a whole host of activities. There's 20 different wilderness, care, wilderness stewardship performance elements, each of which has a suite of activities associated with them. And I would um, suggest that you go to our website and download the Wilderness Stewardship Performance Guidebook to get a, a better sense of the complete suite of activities that could potentially be funded with this um, partnership funding. Now, to qualify for the program, the proposed work must count for each individual wilderness area that it's being proposed for. And so each wilderness area has already previously selected 10 of those 20 or so elements as its key counters. So in your discussions with the Forest Service, you need to talk about what are the key counters within the wilderness area I'm interested in, and then decide how best to, to meet those um, work activities. Um, in the past, we have managed this as both a summer and a winter program. We started this back in 2016 with initial seed money of about $180,000. Um, we carried some of that over into a winter program. In 2017, we had $200,000 and again carried some into a winter program. Um, in 2018, uh, we had roughly $200,000 to, to allocate. Um, and in 2018 or 2019, now we we're looking at having 165,000 at least initially. There's also uh, currently a winter. WSP program going on right now where we had $25,000 available and there's six projects that are currently active across the, the country. With this program, you can see that we've had a, 
um, actually a declining number of proposals. We in the first year we had 17 proposals funded out of 28 received. Um, nine, seven out of nine for the winter program, 19 out of 30 for 2017 summer program, um, and we had 20 of 22 programs um, fulfilled in 2018. So it may be because of the the kind of work that is needs to be done to meet this um, stewardship performance, and um, some groups chose to focus more on the trail stewardship funding rather than this particular funding last year. And therefore, the number of applications has been been lower. But what that means is that for wilderness stewardship organizations, your chance of getting a grant or getting some funding is pretty high. Um, provided it meets the basic qualifying requirements, which if you um, go to our website, you can find out what those requirements are. Again, um, the fact sheet, application form, and budget form will be on our website starting this afternoon, no later than Monday morning. It'll all be up and running, uh, following the same sort of schedule as the trail funding um, application period from now until April 15th, um, review of applications from April 15th to May 1st, and then an announcement and selection of, of awards right after May 1st. Um, again, the application form is pretty straightforward. Your contact information, your organization information, the project information, Forest Service coordination, the timeline, and the budget details. Um, I didn't mention it with the trail stewardship, but in terms of forest coordination, one of the requirements with the application package is a support letter from your local ranger district that shows the support that the district ranger has for the project that you're proposing um, in both cases, both for trails and for wilderness stewardship performance. So we we use those as, as recognition that you have coordinated with your local unit, that they're aware of the work that you're doing, that they're approving of it, and that there's no no risk of um, you know, miscommunication or lower risk of miscommunication um, you know, that would lead to conflicts down the road, but that everybody is in alignment, that this is a good project and set to go. Um, again, with the Wilderness Stewardship Performance, funding we screen it uh, against each of the wildernesses and the, the 10 elements that they've chosen for that wilderness that the work that you're proposing will qualify we again look at the cash and in-kind matches the same way uh, that we do for the trail stewardship at least a one-to-one -one in combination um, and the more the better uh, we look at your organization capability past past of success and then the project feasibility um, is it gonna? Is it feasible to do what you're proposing to do in the amount of time and for the number of people? And then the key accomplishment factor that we look at here is what level of WSP scoring is going to be improved? How many elements and how much improvement in the actual scoring will occur? That's why it's important to understand how the scoring works and to re review that guidebook to, to better understand that. Um, we do look a little bit at the number of volunteers that are involved, the number of staff that might be engaged, and then we do a final balancing in the project selections by the, the type of projects and the area and the regions that are going to be affected. We've done pretty well about having projects in every region of the forest in the past. It just depends on the number of projects and where they are located, but we have had good good balance. Um, okay, so I'll stop there and see if there are any questions about the Wilderness Stewardship Program funding. Cue these up here. Um, Peggy asks if you can apply for both programs, and the answer is yes. And is that $165,000 in hand? Um, yes, it is. It's a, it's a commitment. The Forest Service has it. It was not affected by the off-the-top funding issue that affected the trails funding. Um, you know, the only thing that could affect this is if somehow in the final budget there is a hiccup, 
but um, we fully expect that the paperwork will be processed very soon, that those monies will be in our challenge cost share, and we will be good to go. Um, let's see, this other question. Now, there are some, some of you applied for internal wilderness stewardship performance funding through the Forest Service's internal process. They, they had a system where they set up a, a 2018 and 2019 funding program. And many of the wilderness stewardship groups work with the local ranger districts to apply for that internal funding. Unfortunately, that internal funding has been caught up in the off the top um, passing of, of funding from the WO to the regions. And it's a mixed bag on whether those projects that were selected in that internal program will be funded or not. There are some regions that have agreed to fully fund those projects. There are some regions that may partially fund those projects. And there are some regions that have decided to redeploy the, that funding into other areas. Um, you'll need to work with your forest counterparts and your regional wilderness specialists to understand what the impacts might be to your particular project. I don't have that level of detail since we don't deal with that internal funding. Um, so it's it's an unfortunate result of sending those funds out to the, the regions. So if you would um, make those asks of those people, you can probably find out what might happen. And um, yes, we don't look to see whether you've applied for internal funding or not. I would suspect you might mention that in your application, but we're, we won't hold it against you if you do. Um, we're open to consideration of project proposals um, of whatever type. And note the, the criteria have not changed. They're pretty consistent. Um, the timeline for a award is gonna be the same. Um, application period now between now and April 15th. We'll make those decisions between April 15th and May 1st and we'll make announcements and start issuing agreements Right at right after May first. Um, okay. Um, there's a question about the forest um, maybe not supporting some of the wilderness stewardship performance elements. All I can say there is that each each wilderness has 10 elements out of the 20. If your wilderness area does not subscribe to an element that you're interested in pursuing funding for, it won't qualify for this funding. But if, for example, wilderness education, which is a mandatory element, um, is part of that 10, then it will certainly qualify and it will receive full consideration. Um, the letter of support that will come from the forest or from the district, um, I'm, I'm sure will um, show support for anything that's gonna help improve scoring. And even if the local district may not prioritize, um, work on some of those mandatory elements. Um, there's no reason why partners can't be involved to assist in that and to meet some of the obligations, even if the local district doesn't have the capacity to do so. And, you know, I would be happy to follow up with anybody that has a more detailed question or a more site-specific question to their forest district situation. Just send me an email to randy at wildernessalliance.org and we'll try to respond to you by email or by phone at a later time. Um, question we have is for both grant programs, 
is money available to help purchase equipment? And yes, it is. These funds can be used to uh, purchase equipment. We do screen. We don't typically like to have huge equipment purchases, but we can. And um, I mean, by huge, I mean buying like a an ATV or a, other forms of transportation, but we, we do have that capability. It just depends on what it will facilitate and how it will help support long-term trail maintenance in an area or the completion of a wilderness stewardship project um, if it's another type of equipment that's useful in wilderness. So, um, so yeah, feel free. Um, the average funding for uh, trail projects which I should have probably talked about. Uh, trail projects, the average funding again range from uh, $1,500 $1, up to $20,000. I'd say the average was probably in the six to $8,000 range across the, the, the total of the 42 projects that we funded last year. For WSP projects, um, I think the typical would be in that probably eight to $10,000 range. I think we had there's usually a, a number of projects in the two to four thousand dollar level, um, then a bulge in about the middle port of the the, the thing, and then no more than twenty thousand at the top end. For WSP projects, um, probably not as many get funded at that higher level of um, you know seventeen, eighteen, twenty thousand dollar level, but the, the average is typically between eight and ten. Okay, got another question here. Um, are we looking at pursuing other ways, other funding sources? That's a great question, Donna, thank you. And yes, the answer to that is yes, we are. Um, we spent a number of days at the Outdoor Retailer Show in July last summer, um, looking talking to the outdoor retailer companies and corporations and trying to generate interest in participating in certainly the trail stewardship funding as well as the wilderness funding. Um, didn't have a lot of great success for a number of reasons. Uh, I think the ask that we had might have been viewed as too big for some, some folks to consider, but we're continuing to work on that. And in the days ahead, we're working with um, the trails community with American Trails on an effort called Trails Move People, which is an effort to try to, again, gain some traction with the corporate um, industry community to better understand the need for them to contribute to the, the trails funding in the future as a way to continue outdoor recreation access and outdoor recreation participation um, on the national forest and on public lands. We need to get, have them better understand that the supply that we provide um, needs help. Um, and that only comes through additional funding that we can then share with partner groups um, and you know, get work done on the, the agency trail system and in wilderness. So we're working on that. Um, there is also another effort along with the Trails Move People effort um, to develop a program around a national trail stewardship fund and be looking for some information about that in the days to come. Um, we want to see if we can't generate a big coalition of stewardship and trails groups around the country that would support the formation of a trail stewardship fund that would go towards you know, funding projects like these on an annual basis with some commitments by some large funders um, around the country. So we are hopeful to get that kicked off here shortly as well. Okay, um, just real briefly, a couple other programs that we offer when we have funding for them. One is the Boots on the Ground Wilderness, Wilderness Stewards Program. Um, 
These are generally small scale projects, um, two to three to four thousand dollars that focus on um, getting boots on the ground. Just people doing trails work, rec site rehab, um, involved with outreach to local communities. And um, we've been able to offer that a couple of times in our past, and it just depends on us being able to secure some funding. So you'll just have to watch our website to see if, if we'll when and when we're able to offer that. And of course, we'll, if we have funding for this, we'll, we'll announce it. Um, yeah, I think you can kind of read that. Typically, these are smaller scale projects um, that are focused on, you know, getting youth out and getting specific projects completed um, in wilderness. So, so finally, on both trail, on both the trail stewardship program and the WSP program, my advice for you is first follow the instructions. Um, you may be surprised sometimes how people fail to read the instructions, but it, we try to make it simple, keep it easy, fill out the form, put in the information, and send it in. Don't modify the forms or the formats. I I, I know it's more efficient to use Adobe Acrobat to send in large documents and uh, pictures and such, but it's a lot more difficult to, to use them in that, that way. So just send them back right now in Word and Excel format. Make sure that the work qualifies and get that coordination with the Forest Service done early so that your letters of support will come in in a timely manner. Um, Again, some cash increases your competitiveness, but it's not a requirement, but it will help. And then, um, you know, plan the work within the time period. Um, I didn't mention it, but in both the trails performance, trail stewardship and the WSP um, stewardship this year, the period of work will be now, will be essentially May 1st when the awards are granted through December 31st. We're going to allow additional time period for the WSP work to occur. We still, at this point, want to get the trail work done within the calendar year. Um, so we are looking at potentially making these a two-year cycle, um, but we're not there yet. Um, we did tie that discussion. And for trails, again, miles matter. And on WSP, scores in your WSP scoring system are what matter. So those deadlines, again, for both programs will be April 15th. Um, look for the application materials starting no later than Monday, um, but hopefully I'll start filtering them out later today. And in terms of some upcoming information that you'd be interested in, we've got another series of webinars planned throughout the spring, early summer. Um, on Tuesday of next week, we have the Wild Spotter Invasive Species Inventory mobile phone app webinar that will be um, rescheduled from its January timeframe to our typical um, webinar timeframe on the second Tuesdays of the month at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time. The long distance on March 12th, we'll have a panel on long distance trails and wilderness using our partners at the Partnership for the National Trail System, Continental Divide, Appalachian Trail, Pacific Crest Trail. And they'll talk about ways that wilderness stewardship groups, other, tra other trails groups can work with the long distance trails community um, inside wilderness. April 9th, we have the Merlin Bird ID mobile phone app that the Cornell University is preparing. <laughs> we will talk about how it might be used as a way of sending volunteers out to do bird inventories within wilderness areas. May 14th, we have a lady from the Latino Access Foundation who's going to talk about Latino Conservation Week to help with our efforts of reaching out in diversity, inclusiveness, and equity issues. And on June 11th, we have a speaker from the National Environmental Education Foundation who's going to talk about National Public Lands Day and how your group can better participate that in, in that activity and how you might do some activities outside of wilderness to support Public Lands Day. Also want to let you know that um, if you're in the Colorado area, commuting area, there's a spring volunteer workshop 
workshop in Fort Collins, Colorado on April 10th and 11th. You can check the Poudre Wilderness Volunteers website for more information about this gathering of wilderness stewards around Colorado. And finally, announce that in our 2019 National Wilderness Workshop will be located here in Bend, Oregon on October 23rd, 26th. We're going to have a full week of activities, we hope, with some free workshop training, a poster session on Wednesday night as we kick off the event, and then two days of presentations, discussions, workshops, followed by field trips on Saturday the 26th. So if you, so we um, looking forward to a, a great event. Hope everybody will consider attending. Uh, registration will begin June 1st and will proceed during the, the summer months. Um, more information on that will be forthcoming. So to recap, um, consider making those trail stewardship funding calls to your regional forester. Look to our website for a copy of the briefing paper and the contact information for the people that should be called. Uh, review your NWSA website for the materials on all the applications apply by April 19th, April 15th. And if you're successful, that funding will start May 1st through December 31st. So, so thankful for you guys to attend today. I know we're getting close to time. If there's any other questions, I'll stick on the line and answer them. And other than that, if, feel free to send me a message at randy at wildernessalliance.org. Thanks so much for all you do for wilderness. Thanks for your support of the National Wilderness Stewardship Alliance. Um, yes, this webinar is going to be available um, on our website uh, as soon as I can um, download it and edit it a little bit and put it up there. So yeah, it should be available certainly by next week. Another question is asked, would a state level conservation corps consider the youth program? Sure. Yeah, if um, they certainly can be and um, have been in the past, um, they often reach out to those, those youth in the um, early college age, um, people in their 20s, definitely. Um, I wouldn't, and somebody's asked if, um, so is the boots on the ground the best avenue for these youth programs? I'd say um, no. Go ahead and consider both the Trail Stewardship Act money and the, the Wilderness Stewardship Performance funding. Those are the only two that we'll have funds to, to work with this year. So please go ahead and consider applying for those funds. Alrighty. Patrice, you're welcome for the work down on the Gila. Thank you guys so much for all you do. All right, thank you guys for all the kind comments about the webinar. And um, I don't see any other questions. So we're gonna go ahead and close this out right now. Um, thanks so much again for joining us this morning. We hope the webinar is gonna be helpful for you and putting together a great um, proposal for either of the programs, um, feel free to give me a call again or send me an email, we'll help you um, as we can. So thanks so much for the National Wilderness Stewardship Alliance. We're gonna go ahead and close this out.